as rates and dimensional analysis. We've been talking about slope uh, quite a bit. It's our Greek uh, alphabet symbol. What's that called? Delta. delta Y over delta X. And yesterday, guys, can you not talk while I'm talking? Thank you. Yesterday, we started talking about dimensional analysis. analysis. All right, the first topic we're going to talk about is called slope as rate. Can I get a volunteer to read the first paragraph that starts with the slope of a line? Akil. The slope of line can represent many things. In the big race, you concentrate in on situations where, where the rate of change of a line, the slope represented speed in meters seconds. However, rate of change can represent many other things. Besides speed, depending on the situation. Okay, so slope can change depending on the situation. We've done meters per second. Today you're going to see a baby chicken grow in grams per day. All right, the next paragraph starts with since the slope. Volunteer to read since the slope. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chow, please. Awesome, thank you. Great job reading. So they're referring to this graph over here where they had in seven years they have 21,000 people. They accidentally typed a three. So over the top of that three, write in a two. It should say 21,000 people, right? Why is that making a difference? It's a whole extra. Yeah, because it the seven goes into that evenly. <laughs> the seven does not go into 31 easily. How many times does seven go into 21? Three. Three. That's where this 3,000 comes from. Okay, so it's changing. The population of this little town is changing by 3,000 people per year. Okay, so you can see each year the population is going up. Can you not talk while I'm talking? Put your binder on the ground. I just want your packet on your desk. Thank you. All right, a volunteer to read the paragraph under dimensional analysis that starts with to use different different units. Manuel. To use different units for rate of change or any other dimension, use dimensional analysis and conversional tactics from the lesson 2.2 or before math and English class. Use those twice. Reciprocals? Reciprocals. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in there because I don't know why they made it really, really super small. But yesterday we used that conversion table. <coughs> and here's how it works. All right. We have... 3,000 people per year, but what if we want it in how many people per hour? So you're going to go to the conversion table, and you're going to see how many days are in one year. How many days are in one year? 365 days, okay? We also need to know how many hours are in one day. How many hours? 24. So you say there's a ratio of one day is 24 hours. Right? That's how you're going to make these giant ones. Then you group your year and your year together. They're going to cancel and go to a giant one. Then you group your day and your day together. They're going to go to a giant one and cancel. Then you're going to look at all your numerators going across and multiply them. You'll have 3,000 times 1 times 1 times 1. What does that equal? 3,000, because anything times 1 is 3,000, right? Then you're going to multiply all your numbers in your denominator. 1 times 1 times 365 times 24. I just put it in there. It's 
very small and it soaked already into the concrete so i think it's okay all right, all right. thanks for checking uh, <laughs> so i would take the 365 and the 24 and multiply them how where can you do that calculator, calculator. okay then your last operation is to do what with the 3,000? Divide it. You're going to divide it by whatever you get after you multiply those numbers. Notice you get this crazy decimal. 0 0.342 people for every one hour. Okay? So we changed from how many people per year to how many people per hour using the conversion table that we looked at yesterday. All right, so that's how the giant ones work. Turn in your packet back two pages to page 25. At the top of page 25 is the start of lesson 2.3.1, which is called writing the equation of a line given the slope and a point. All right, if you know one point and you know the slope, you can find the y-intercept, and then write your equation of the line. The slope goes in for which variable? So you, what's the equation of the line? y equals what? mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. The slope goes in for which of those? m. Okay? You know the m, and you can find the b, then you can plug those two numbers in and have your equation of the line. All right? We're going to do it using a graph, all right? How can I use slope and a point to write an equation? Volunteer to read this paragraph about our friend Colleen. Yes, Rick. Colleen decided to track the weight of one of her chicks down the floor of the pool and took her to a pond. She found that her chicks were steadily by about 5 feet and a half each other. Her chicks were steadily so she Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So we've got basically two pieces of information here, right? They told us that the chick is growing every day by about 5.2 grams. And on which day? Day nine. nine our chick weighed 98.4. Okay. That's the important information. We're going to make a graph out of that. So problem 88 says to refer to 87. They forgot to write the 87 there. They're just talking about the question about Colleen. Okay? So, part A. Bless you. Part A says, what is the chick's rate of growth? 5.2 grams. That chick is growing 5.2 grams every day. How does that relate to the equation of the line? Well, it becomes the slope. If it's growing 5.2 grams per day, that means the slope is 5.2. Write that down on, pa on your paper right now. Okay? Let's read question B. Question B says, before graphing, describe the line that represents the growth of the chip. Do you know any point on the line? Yes, you do. What's that point? No, that's the growth. What's the point on the line? What's the other information they gave you? Nine. On day nine, the chick, the chick was how big? 98.2. 98.2. So you make a point out of that. You say that there's a point at 9, 98.4. 9, 98.4. The other information, obviously, is the slope is at 5.2. So you've got a point and you've got a slope. All right, so we're going to graph that. The directions for part C tell you exactly what to do. It says, draw a line for this situation. Let the horizontal axis represent the number of days the chick, the number of days since the chick hatched. With your arm, show me what the horizontal axis looks like. Yes, you should be like this. Everybody go like this. Say horizontal. 
Okay, that's the horizontal axis. You should label it with what word? Tells you right in the problem. Days. Label the horizontal axis days. D-A-Y-S. And let the vertical axis represent the chick's weight with your arm. Show me the vertical axis. Say, everybody say vertical. 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 What should you label that with? Weight. Weight. So you're going to write weight on the vertical axis. W-E-I-G-H-T. Then it says, label, this, uh, label and scale your axis appropriately and title your graph growth of a baby chick. Tells you exactly what to write. Growth of a baby chick. Write it on there right now. Okay. <laughs> what would be an appropriate way to label the horizontal axis? Through 10, right? Because it go says day 9. So we're going to label it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do that right now. What would be an appropriate way to label the y axis or the vertical axis? We need to get all the way up to what? 98.4, which is really close to what? 100. Okay, so we want to get up to 100. If I wrote out all the numbers between 1 and 100, would it fit? Probably not, unless you wrote teeny tiny. And it would take you a really long time. So we're going to do what's called scale the axis down a little bit and go by 5. 5 all the way up to 100. Okay, do that on your, on your vertical axis right now. Then you're going to put an approximate point where 9, day 9, so here's day 9 across the horizontal axis, and it was 98.4 grams. So go all the way up, almost to the top, so you should be in the upper right-hand corner somewhere. 9, 98.4. It's hard because there aren't lines. Like there's not the grid part. So you kind of you're gonna you should just be up in the upper right hand corner somewhere. Okay. What if I wanted to find out how much the chick weighed on day ten? What could I do? I would use an operation. Would I add, subtract, multiply, divide, add? What will we add? How many gr grams it's grams. going per day? We would add 5.2. So if we wanted to go this direction, we would add. What if we wanted to find out day 8? We would subtract. So you're going to start with 98.4, and you're going to subtract 5.2. That's going to tell you how big the chick is at day 8. If you keep subtracting 5.2, you can get all of the weights for each of the days. You could go all the way to day zero. What happened on, to the chick on day zero? Well, no, that's the day it hatches. Comes out of the, the, out of the egg, right? Okay. So we could figure out day zero by, by subtracting 5.2 a bunch of times. That means that chick on day zero was 51.6. Grams. Okay. Which my line is a little crooked. Why? Because I don't have the grid and it's not perfect. Okay. If yours is closer, great. You draw a better line than I do. All right. To get to 140 grams, we can keep adding 5.2 to the 98.4 until we get to 140. That should be the 17th day. Okay. The other way I figured it out is I set the equation of the line equal to 140, subtract the 51.6, divide by 5.2, I got 17. So that means the chick would be 140 grams on the 17th day. So what does the y-intercept represent in this situation? The weight when it was first hatched, right? So you're going to write down the weight that the 